We're good? All right, we're go for launch. Good morning, everybody. Can you hear me? Okay, good. All right, we're starting. Colleagues, faculty, staff, Mr. DeCasper, our honored guests, and our online participants. Okay, good. And guests who are with us from around the country, virtually and through our webcast. And most especially to all of our graduates, I extend my warmest congratulations to all of those receiving certificates and associate degrees today. I add my welcome to Center for Advanced Legal Studies 65th commencement. That's a lot of commencements, isn't it? I would like to acknowledge South Texas College of Law for the facilities. And I would also like to take a moment to thank my colleagues whose assistance during the past few weeks of preparation have made this morning possible. I will begin my remarks by saying whatever you are feeling today, you deserve to hold a keen sense of accomplishment. Everyone here celebrates with you. You all have worked very hard for this milestone. Whether you completed your program online, in Saturday classes, or in our weekday program, we have tremendous pride in each and every one of you. At the same time, we can't let this occasion pass without recognizing a very important group of individuals whose devotion and support have contributed significantly to the su successes we are celebrating here today. So as I do with each graduation, I'd like to ask the loved ones, family members, and friends who are in the audience to please stand. Please give them a round of applause. Wow. That's a lot of folks. All right, you can be seated. I think I speak for all of the graduates in saying we, we thank you for the encouragement that you have offered and in many cases for the sacrifices you have made in helping your graduates along the way. So back to my graduates. It's a fantastic achievement for each of you to have made it here. You came to Cal's with aspirations about what education could make possible and with dreams about how your lives would be changed. In recognizing hard work, dedication, and overcoming obstacles, I would like to mention our Lex nominees and our honor students. These students have demonstrated superior academic performance. Lex is the National Honor Society sponsored by the American Association for Paralegal Education, and graduates earning Lex uh, must have 95% attendance and a 3.9 grade point average. We also have our own honors program at CALS, and these graduates are extraordinary in their achievements because with all of the obstacles that life can bring, they still maintain focus on 100% attendance and a 4.0 grade point average. The honor graduates are noted in the program, and they will be wearing a gold cord to signify their achievements. But I would like for them to stand at this time and be recognized as a whole. We have many shining stars among us, and whether they achieved honors or not, we could select students at random to illustrate the talents and accomplishments of this graduating class and the challenges faced by each person in it to impact change in their lives. But there is one graduate in particular I would like to highlight. I do believe she is joining us online. Pamela Lykos was not able to be present, and she is joining us from Michigan. Pamela completed her certificate with CALS in January 2019, and she is now graduating with her associate degree. What is notable about Pamela is that she completed both programs with a 4.0 and 100% attendance. But even more important, she didn't just earn straight A's, she, she earned straight A's in all 16 courses. This is an accomplishment very few people achieve. It takes dedication and discipline to consistently maintain 100% attendance and a 4.0 GPA for two years 
and college level courses. Um, I was talking with a faculty member yesterday and, and we, were, we were laughing. Um, think of it this way, there was not one single night where Pamela said, you know, I think I can just skip a little bit. Like she consistently showed up day after day after day. So well done, Pamela. Uh, we congratulate you. All right, speaking of courts, I, I don't know if I saw anybody that's in attendance, but we have several veterans who are joining us who are graduating, and they are designated with a red, white, and blue court. I don't know if anybody, are, if, if you are a veteran and in the audience, please stand. There we go. I would like, well, everyone at CALS would like to recognize you and thank you for your service and for defending the freedoms that we all enjoy every day. I have a young man that's also in service, and so um, I recognize all that you have done and will continue to do for us. It's not in my, my intro, but I understand that there are, or there may be, several graduates and their families who have joined us from a long distance either in Texas or across the U.S. And I don't know you by names, but if you have traveled quite a distance to be with us today, would you please stand? Wow. Thank you. I, it, it takes a lot to, to, to make a trek, especially across the U.S., so um, on behalf of everyone at CALS, I would like to thank you for joining us. So hopefully you'll have a wonderful morning. At this point, I'm going to let Mr. Happy come up and speak to you about faculty and staff, and then we'll move forward in the rest of the time. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> it's good to see you guys. Um, again, my name is Eric. A lot of you, if you take if you take campus classes, you, you, you've seen me, you've met me, if you've been in our online program, you probably saw me in orientation or hopping into one of your classes from time to time. Uh, but it's, it's great to get an opportunity to meet you uh, in person. If I haven't met you before, please try to find me. I'm over there by the video camera today. And uh, just so you know, I do look a lot taller online than in person. So. That's my only joke. I use it every time. So. Uh, and one thing about Pamela, I, I don't know if I heard correctly, but in the 16 courses that she took, uh, not only were, did she get straight A's, she had straight A pluses. So I'm not sure if that came through, but uh, she really did an amazing job. Uh, so we're proud of her. Uh, one thing I want to talk about now that you guys are graduates, whether it's the certificate program or the associate's degree. Some of you may be graduating from our certificate and going on to the associate's degree. Is our alumni network that we try to build and it's for you guys, it's for our graduates. Uh, there's some advantages once you're an alumni of Center for Advanced Legal Studies. Uh, of course, you get to keep your Microsoft online account and your paralegal.edu email address. That doesn't go away, um, so keep that in mind. Uh, we provide you with discounts on seminars and, in many cases, additional courses. So if there are courses that we add in the future, you might be able to come back and add that course. Um, it's kind of cool. Uh, opportunities to keep in touch and stay connected. Um, what could happen down the road is you might be like David DeCasper, one of our alumni, and we call you asking for you to uh, speak at commencement. So beware of that. So. Uh, you can also provide critical input and help us shape the future of our curriculum and our programs, our services. Uh, we really rely on our, our alumni who've been out working to help provide us feedback how we can improve and make our programs better in the future. Um, about the alumni group, we, we try to have uh, social events. We have an alumni mixer that's going to be April 9th at the Palm Restaurant on Westheimer. So if you're here in town and you can make it, please Follow us on social media. You'll find all the information about when it's uh, going to be and any of those details. You can also contact Tammy. Uh, she, she has, she's coordinating that event, so she has all those details. 
Um, but right now, I just want to introduce uh, our staff and faculty. Hopefully, I have everyone here. So, uh, you've met Tammy Riggs, our Director of Outreach and Career Services, and our host uh, this morning. Um, Crystal Camacho was at the front desk. Uh, if you ever call into the school or if you have questions about your books or really anything, you've probably spoken with Crystal many times. Uh, Leticia Ramirez also uh, works with financial aid. Uh, you guys know Letty. Sarah Casey, who was coordinating our, I don't know what, our procession just a minute ago. So everyone knows Sarah. Uh, she does many different things uh, for us there at the center. Uh, Randy Jerding, back there behind the camera. Uh, you may not have met Randy, but she's in every single class you've ever taken in Canvas. So she helps the faculty make sure everything is uh, squared away as best we can. Um, Jane Shepard, our Director of Admissions. A lot of you worked with him during your enrollment. Uh, and uh, last but not least, Doyle Happy, our co-founder and director of Center for Advanced Legal Studies. Uh, so some members of our faculty are with us today. Some are probably watching online uh, for various reasons, but we have Gary Desario. Gary. And Sahar Grovis. Everyone's had Sahar in their in their black. Uh, Joy Odin. If you've had English with Center for Advanced Studies, you've had Joy. And uh, the one instructor that every Every student has, regardless of whether you're on campus or online, is Aida Zimnicki. Aida? Let's see, am I missing anyone? Well, yeah, I'm saving Mr. Swanson. I'm saving Mr. Swanson. Uh, and so last, certainly not least, uh, Mr. Tom Swanson, our academic dean, the first instructor we've ever had, and uh, still uh, inspiring students, especially on campus, uh, Tom Swanson. I think, I think, Mr. Swanson, you were going to say a few words. <laughs> Twisting his arm. So, again, Mr. Swanson. I hate microphones, partly because no one's ever accused me of not being heard. But at any rate, I'll follow, I'll follow the protocol. Uh, welcome, everyone, both the graduates uh, and uh, uh, the ones that are on uh, online and streaming and all that sort of thing. Uh, welcome. And I'm always amazed by the crowd that comes. Probably shouldn't be, because the fact of the matter is, is that this is the great ritual that we have in the United States, and that is the celebration of achievement. And we all know that achievement involves sacrifice, that it, in, it involves, uh, you know, having to having to give up other things sometimes that you, you might rather be doing in any given day. To have to balance family and, uh, you know, all kinds of things. Work for many of our, uh, of our students that are working while they are going to school. And uh, while other people may be watching Dancing with the Stars, they're studying, okay? And, you know, the problem is, is that when you're engaged in the process of achievement, it's kind of lonely. You know, you, there's things you just have to do by yourself. But while we get the opportunities in America to do things, we make the choices as far as what we do. Now, I congratulate each and every one of you, and I respect you tremendously for what you have accomplished. So now I'm ready to tell you what happens next. Achievement reminds me of a stair-stepper in the gym. 
I like to watch people do it. I don't like to do it myself. And as you can tell, I haven't been. Um, what, I can, what I can say is, is that more choices are coming. You've got all kinds of, of experience now in achievement. And after a while, you say, why am I not achieving something else? Why am I not increasing my values? Why am I not pursuing uh, dreams that I have? And I think that uh, you're going to find out, and I think our guest speaker today will affirm what I'm saying, that, uh, you know, achievement only stops when you say it does. You can keep on going. We have graduates that, uh, that are working in such a variety of different positions. One of the great things about becoming a paralegal is all the choices you have. So many different areas of, of work that exist. Um, and inc incidentally, uh, I really like it a lot when we have graduates come and speak as keynote speakers. And the reason I say that is, is I'm a trial lawyer. And when you deal in trial matters, it's all about evidence. And every time these people come to talk to you, it's Exhibit A, it's Exhibit B, it's Exhibit C. Okay? And they get to tell you their story and how they have developed careers. Now, I met the, the our distinguished guest speaker about 25 years ago. I will tell you today, we both look different than we did back then. <laughs> um, but I will tell you this, uh, that uh, our speaker typifies uh, the whole notion of achievement and continuing and continuing and continuing to achieve. He also demonstrates something else, which our other, spe our other graduate speakers have, have done, and that is they started in one area and then went to another area. Now that's versatility when you can do that in a career where, for example, you might start out as one of our past speakers did in personal injury law, and then for some inexplicable reason went to family law. And, uh, you know, I finally asked him one day, why did you do that? And he said, because I wanted to be on the front lines of it. And that was the area where I could be on the front lines. So, at any rate, I'm not going to take up any more of your time because I don't want to, I don't want to deprive you of all the time our distinguished speaker will give you. So I'm going to go ahead and kneel and uh, have someone introduce him. Congratulations. Thank you. I'm going to try to do him justice. I think our next speaker is really awesome. He's a Harley enthusiast. He knows how to live life to the fullest. If he wasn't working in law, he likely would have been a rock star. David was a drummer in a Kiss tribute band and currently sings lead in a Godsmack tribute band. He loves to travel. He loves red wine. He loves Italian food. He hates pickles. All of this is actually true. But there is so much more to David DeCasper. David is a highly regarded paralegal. He's known by his associates for being hardworking, savvy, and passionate about his chosen profession. I did my research. He was instrumental in the startup of Adami Garza 15 years ago and he is the senior paralegal managing their pre-litigation personal injury department. His proficiency, skill set, and love for the law have only furthered the ongoing success of this firm. Colleagues describe David as a fierce negotiator who exhausts all options to help clients get the settlements that they deserve. He has built a reputation for championing clients' rights and he has very high expectations. But he is also quite humble and deeply committed to his grandson and family, including his work family. 
As Mr. Swanson indicated, David is a longtime friend to Cal's. He is a former faculty member and taught intellectual property at the college for two years. And as a graduate of our associate degree paralegal program, he credits Cal's for helping him to prepare for a paralegal career. David always goes the extra mile to support Cal's in student success and is very committed to student achievement. David has actually been where you are, and he is currently where you want to go. I'm sure he will have many valuable insights, so please help me welcome Mr. David DeCasper. Good morning. My dear friends, honorable teachers, respected faculty, and counselors, good morning and welcome to you all. I'm really happy to see all of you and be here with you at this joyous moment. I am grateful to you and to the honorable instructors and staff at this great institution for giving me a chance to share my stories and experiences and be a part of this great occasion with you. This day is so much more than you graduating. This day is special for many reasons but it's overwhelming for those that love you. This day and this moment belong to your parents, your spouses, your friends, your families, your life partners, your children, your siblings, everybody. So let's take a moment and share this with them. Graduates, please stand and cheer for all those that have helped you get to this moment. And while we're at it, let's give a big thank you to the staff for Center for Advanced Legal Studies. Thirty years ago, a high school education was sufficient to get a good job and support a family. You could leave high school, start working, and have a family. In the 21st century, it takes some form of continued education to get a good job. In making the decision to go to the Center for Advanced Legal Studies, you have opened up a door to a whole new world of opportunity. The more education you attain, the more doors you will open. Today we celebrate a commencement, a beginning, a start. As someone who believes in lifelong education, it is my hope that this is only the beginning of your lifelong educational journey. For many of you, the path to commencement has not been an easy one. You may be the first in your family to attend college. Show of hands, anybody the first in your family? Good for you, awesome. <laughs> Choosing to go to college is in and of itself a daunting task. There are forms to be filled out, meetings to be had, placement tests, schedules, there's a whole new world ahead. Many of you faced other challenges along the way. You've gone to school in between working or taking care of a family, which is no easy feat. Trust me, I did it. <laughs> it's no easy feat. There were times when I'm sure you wanted to give up, when it wasn't so easy to get your homework or paper done, that you did it. You persevered, and it's paid off. Celebrate your job well done as you revel in your accomplishments. When you made the choice to walk through the doors at the Center for Advanced Legal Studies, you started the growth process. And when you chose to stay, regardless of the challenges ahead of you, you continued that process. Many of you here today will teach your children these lessons and have shown them a great lesson in life, and that's education. My name is David DeCasper, and I am a proud 1996 alumni of the Center for Advanced Legal Studies. Wow, it's been a while. <laughs> As Mr. Swanson said, we both looked a lot differently. <laughs> uh, I'm sure many of you are wondering how I arrived here today. In my early years, long before the college, thought of college entered my mind. As Tammy said, I only wanted to do one thing, and that was just be a rock star. I, uh, had no, no thoughts of going to college, just 
I thought that my life would be on a stage, banging on some drums or doing something. You know? In August of 95, everything kind of came to a crossroads. Within a matter of days, I didn't have a job, didn't have a house, didn't have any money, had no direction. Every single thing, no band, every single thing that I thought I had just was gone. I was sitting up late one night and saw a commercial for the Center for Advanced Legal Studies and as I sit there on the couch, something clicked. In an instant, I just, I saw my path. People use the word epiphany and, and I think I've only had one in my life and that was it. It was a moment when my life shifted. I called the Center for Advanced Legal Studies. I asked them about enrollment. And within, and within a couple days, I was enrolled at the school in September of 1995. I didn't realize it at the time, just how monumental that decision was in my life. It would not only come to define my career, but it would come to define me as a person. I remember being nervous. I hadn't been in a classroom in years. I had long blonde hair. Back in a ponytail. Yes, I did. <laughs> um, I hadn't completed homework in years. I hadn't thought about school. I hadn't taken a test, anything, and I didn't know if I would make it. I, I think Mr. Happy was telling me earlier, he said, he said, do you remember your first day? And I said, I don't. He said, you were supposed to be in family law and you were lost. He said, you came in, you're like, I am so lost. <laughs> I said, I just remember everything coming at me all at once, and I'm like, what am I doing? Here it, it was, you know, and I'm sure many of you were the same way. You walked in that first day, and it was a whole different world. A few things I picked up over the last 20 years. Your first job will probably not be your last. Most of you will start a job and change it at least once, twice, maybe three times. And let me tell you that changing jobs is no fear, no cause for fear or shame. Changing jobs will be a natural and normal part of your graduate work when you leave here. You will think of what you want to do and what skills you want to develop. Finding your place in the legal world doesn't often happen immediately. Remember this, take the best from each employer and use it to make yourself better. I worked for two law firms before finding my place. I know for a fact I wouldn't have succeeded so well in my current law firm if I didn't have the experiences, both good and bad, from my previous two law firms. When I was working at my second law firm, I met a young lawyer named Miguel Adami. We were both hard workers and extremely unhappy with where we were at. I had had enough and started looking for another job. I had a few options when one night Miguel came and said, do you think we can do this on our own? Now to give you the dynamic of it, I think Miguel had been a lawyer maybe 30 days at the time. This was a bold move for somebody 30 days. A few days later he contacted me and he said, hey, I have enough money for six months. He said, we can pay rent and we can pay payroll for six months. If we haven't figured it out in six months, we're going to have to get real jobs. For me, it was do or die. I, I, I had a wife and two kids, and, and this was sink or swim for me. We got to work every day at 7 a.m. We would have coffee. We would talk till 8. We would each walk into our office, and we'd make one phone call, and we were done for the day. Because we had two cases. We would spend the rest of the day talking about all the nice things we were going to buy when we had money one day. 
truth be known, we'd go to the gallery and we'd window shop for a couple hours every day. <laughs> Obviously, we ended up making it past the six months. A few years later, we continued to grow and we're fortunate enough to have another well-respected attorney named Johnny Garza join the firm. Today, I'm extremely proud to say it's been 15 years since we made the jump. Adame Garza has three offices, we're the possible fourth in the works, and we've grown to almost 30 employees. My point is, don't let bad jobs, bad bosses, or bad situations deter you. Those first two firms enabled me to be in the right place at the right time and be ready for the venture with Miguel and Johnny. Be determined and stay the course because when you least expect it, something amazing will come along and change your life. Miguel's here with me today. Over the next few years, you'll face hard choices, not just about careers and lifestyles, but not about how to balance the two. Until now, choosing the right one's been easy. You've simply picked the option that left the most other options available for you. During the next few years, some of those options will close. With regret, you'll give up some of your dreams. Even if you achieve professional goals, success may come at a personal cost. Nobody wants to hear that, but it's a, t it's a balance. Ask any person who's successful, and they will tell you it probably came at some sort of personal cost. You have to decide how much time to devote to your career and how much time to yourself and your family. This is not often easy. As you confront the questions of how much money and prestige mean to you, you may have to choose between doing good and doing well. Learn to listen and always learn new things. I found one of the most important things for your career can be as simple as listening. There are a number of people who are listening to respond, listen to learn. Encourage others, share your knowledge. Take benefits from people who are living in your surrounding and are more educated and experienced than you. Recognize and learn new things. Learn everything you can about your position and any other position you can. No law firm keeps their brightest at the bottom. It doesn't happen. A few years after leaving the Center for Advanced Legal Studies, I was proud to be asked back as an instructor. Use what you have. Previous jobs, family, hobbies. My background was bands, factories, and numerous low-paying jobs. But don't take that as a negative. Oftentimes in my career, it was the fact in certain situations where many of these I could relate to somebody. In sitting with a client, I knew what they meant because I had been there. And oftentimes not a lot of people have. Many times I've spoke with a client was able to relate something and made them feel better, made them feel like they chose the right law firm because I could relate to them. That didn't come from sitting in school, that came from all my previous experience I had. Read. Ask any CEO or highly successful person, and one of the things they all have in common is they constantly read. Between work and family, it will become hard to find time to read. But if you can do it, it is something that will pay off. Reading books, articles, legal journals are all things that will help you get noticed and pull ahead of all the other paralegals at the firm. I remember many times as a young paralegal that I would take it upon myself to read something, and when everyone was meeting regarding a case, I would jump in the conversation with my new knowledge. It always made me look like I knew what I was doing, when the reality is I had just read the article that morning or the night before. But to this day, one of the single biggest things that I believed that I did was I always surrounded myself with people that were smarter than me. Look around the room. If you are the smartest person in the room, go find a different room. I promise you it will change your life. People who are smarter than you 
make you up your game. Smart people make you smarter. They make you better. They spark interest. They introduce you to new concepts, ideas, cultures, people, restaurants, everything. They know where the good stuff is, like networking events, career opportunities. Smart people, if they are truly smart, know the value of kindness and generosity and are likely to throw some of it your way, which you should in return because you are also smart and know that this sort of behavior makes the world a better place. How can you tell if someone's smarter than you? It's hard since we all think we're pretty smart, but here's some signs that someone is sort of a smart person you should surround yourself with. They listen, they seek out knowledge, they're engaged, they're interested in the world around them, and they're successful both socially and professionally. I'm extremely fortunate to work alongside two amazingly smart lawyers I mentioned earlier, Miguel and Johnny Garza. These two amazing men embody all those qualities I just mentioned and have made me strive to be a better paralegal. I've learned new qualities, new ideas, new ways of thinking, and many other traits from them. They are great leaders, inspirational to not only me, but everyone at Adame Garza. Remember, surround yourself with greatness. As your career moves forward, we all find ourselves with the pressures of work and family. Try not to get lost in your own head and not see the world around you. In 2005, David Foster Wallace, addressing the graduating class, said there are two young fish swimming along. They happen to meet an older fish swimming the other way, who nods at them and says, morning boys, how's the water? The two young fish swim on for a minute, and then eventually one of them looks at the other one and says, what the hell is water? What he was saying is, don't be so caught in your own mind. Don't be caught in your own world. Share things. Notice things around you. The Center for Advanced Legal Studies is given every single tool you need to be whatever paralegal you want to be. I promise you, this road will take you wherever you want it to go. I left over 20 years ago, and I can honestly say my life has surpassed any dream or any idea I had for myself. I, I sometimes wonder if it's all real. You can, you can achieve prestige, money, whatever drives you. However, it's up to you. You have to work it and you have to go with it. It is now in your hands. I want to thank everyone for letting me be a part of this amazing day. I want to congratulate each and every one of you again and say go change the world and go change your world. It'll be a much better place for you. Congratulations. And I'm sure now to the good stuff. You guys get to uh, get to some help. Every time I do this, we get a picture because I have the frame upside down. So I'm, I'm going to take a moment to make sure it's right side up this time. Um, I want to personally thank David for coming in and speaking to our graduating class. He has um, a wealth of knowledge. I think he made some really nice points. And we just couldn't be more thankful um, that he gave up his Saturday morning to join us. So we appreciate everything you do for us. We're not aware of anybody that came in late, right? So the way we normally do this is we will recognize our graduates in the certificate and associate program who are absent.
So we will get to you uh, that are present here in just a second, but I'd like to go ahead and go through the list and recognize the graduates who are joining us live and through our streaming. Um, so we're going to start with the absentee certificate program graduates, and I will just call their names. We can applause at, at the very end. Um, Beatrice Aguilar, Tiana Austin, who is recognized for Lex, Christian Bow, Connie Bernal, Donovan Edward Kane, Marilyn Lucy Calixti, Lisette Camacho, Kiana Monique Carpenter, Amanda Lynn Carrasco, Denise Rayan Richie Chan, Kristen Myra Contreras, a veteran and also recognized for Lex, Amber Jean Corner, Danica Margaret Crabb, uh, also Lex recognized, Laura Ann Davis, Lindsay Nicole Duran, maybe I messed that up, I'm not sure. Carlos Enriquez, also an Honors and Lex graduate. Kimberly Diane Fountain, Cassandra Garcia, Meredith Washam Gilbert, a Lex recognized graduate. Richard Gleason, Althea Lakeisha Gray, a Lex graduate. Allison K. Green, an Honors and Lex graduate. Kiana Kennedy Caviz, Deidre Hamilton, Tanya Lynn Hart, Julissa Veronica Hernandez, Andrea Herrera, Sonia C. Jones, Nina Andrea Katunarik, Kaylin Klausel, who is also a veteran, Cindy Liao, Mary Ann Lozano, Katrina Mays, Amy K. Milliken, Morgan Elizabeth Moore, Courtney Michelle Mouton, Caitlin Grace Mulroy, Melissa Ann Nelson, Constantine Sayanu Nana, a Lex recognized graduate, Afton Elizabeth Perlstein, also a Lex graduate, Miranda Ray Pierce, Kiera Kenise Porter, Zara Rajab, a Lex graduate, Cindy Karen Rico, Emily Ruiz, Viviana Isabella Salazar, Isabella Eve Salazar, Marisol Saria Alcendra, Kimberly Susan Shields, an Honors and Lex graduate, Robin Nicole Taylor, Chastity Nicole Torres, Preston Wayne Wiggins, Rachel Nicole Woodward, and Christy Lee Wright. If we would like to give them a round of applause. Those are our certificate graduates. Now we will acknowledge our associate graduates who are unable to join us today and are uh, with us through our live stream. The first would be Ashley Diane Eve Johnson, Amanda Nicole Craig, Pamela Therese Lycos, an Honors and Lex graduate, Stephanie Ann Melton, Rachel Ortiz, Cole Reese Sorensen, Jessica Malin Stutzman, and I think Crystal Lynn Temple. So we can give those graduates a round. We're ready to acknowledge you guys that are here. We're going to start with the certificate candidates. And then if I can have my I think we're ready to acknowledge you guys that are here. And I think 
I'm going to give it just a second while our photographer gets his set up. You will have access to photos um, individually as you, as you go through, um, and so you can get with him afterwards to find out how to do that. Are we set? Yeah, we're ready. Actually, this is going to be easier. <laughs> Alia Alcasey. She is an honors and Lex graduate. Sean Christopher Belay, an honors and Lex graduate. Olivia Latoya Bethley. Justice Renee Campbell. <laughs> Tia Brianna Cashaw. I'm Nate Deshaun Clark, a Lex graduate. <laughs> Chelsea Jordan Deshaun Cook. Clark. Margaret Louise McCall Drody, a Lex graduate. Christopher Duncan, an honors and Lex graduate. Haley Jo Fournier. <laughs> Darenice Michelle Franks, a Lex graduate. Danielle Johnson, who's also a veteran. <laughs> Miriam M. Kabir, an honor, honors and life graduate. I think I called you twice. 
Melissa Annette Kaiser. Aaron Mark Lewis, a Lex graduate. Rhonda Lorraine Little, a Lex graduate. Leah Shanice Naramalo. Did I get it right? <laughs> Natasha Ninkovic, a Lex graduate. <laughs> Roya Piche. <laughs> Sheila Posey. Myoshi Price. There you are. She's, she's a veteran and a Lex graduate. Sandra Esther Ramirez, also an honors and Lex graduate. Luis Alfonso Rodriguez, Jr. Oh, we're way out of <laughs> I'm trying to find you. You're kind of out of seat. This is why we do this. Joshua Lee Espatia. Mary Solis. <laughs> Adriana Diane Thomas. <laughs> Dionethia Sanquist Trust, a Lex graduate. Jennifer Wiggins. I almost want to check this back over there, but I'm going to hold on to it for just a second. <laughs> Patricia Wright. And Mario V. Young. <laughs> All right, let's give those those graduates a, a round of applause. to recognize our associate degree graduates. And first on the list is Fortune Digany.
All right, Sheila R. Dunn, a Lex graduate. Liliana Naomi Lopez. Casey Evelyn Moore. Leticia Rangel. Monica Talamantes. <laughs> Alexis Renee Valadez. Applause, please. Okay, we would like to now confer the Associate of Applied Science degree graduates, so if you will all rise. And if you will move your tassels from the right to the left. All right, that concludes our commencement for today. However, I have a few announcements. Um, I want to remind everybody that if you were not able to take photos before you arrived, our photographer is still available. We'd like one of you, Mr. DeCasper. We also want to get a group photo, so we would like all of our certificates together, we would like all of our associates together, and then we'll take a, a big photo together before I send you to the back. You will be able to go back to the front desk once we have our photos, and our staff will give you your credentials there. Um, I would really like to thank everybody who came out. This was a really great showing. It was a wonderful event. Um, congratulations to all our graduates. And if you haven't contacted me yet regarding career services, please do so. Um, I'm here to help each and every one of you. Congratulations again.